Today I'm going to take the cone-shaped spinner off my SESTA 150G and replace it with a skull cap type. The reason being the cone type blocks way too much of the oil cooling uh, air inlets and too much of the uh, inlet in the front of the cowl. Uh, there are the part numbers, both bought from aircraft sprues, pretty reasonable. I think the whole kit was probably 50 bucks. Uh, all of these are Phillips head. Make sure you got a tight fitting one so you don't jump out of the screw and scratch your paint. I'm going to speed it up quite a bit and then get frustrated and bored and grab my drill. Just make sure you're applying pressure so again you don't jump out and scratch your paint. Once I get this off, you'll see that there's a front and a back plate, one in front of the propeller and one behind. I didn't quite realize that I'd have to have the propeller off, but I will end up taking that off for this video and to get that back plate off that I won't need anymore. There are the plates I mentioned. Uh, test the fit of the skull cap spinner obviously I don't want the plates on as well so I'm going to take those off cut off the safety wire for these uh, six bolts that hold on the propeller make sure you keep all the bits of your safety wire you don't want them inside the cowl or in your truck tire I'm going to put a link down in the description uh, to some of the tools I use, uh, torque wrench, especially the safety wire pliers, the millbar safety wire plier that is really, really nice. Right there I just put a mark on the propeller and the flange that comes off the drive shaft so that I know I can put it back in the same orientation. Twist off all this the uh, bolts here and make sure that I've got one hand at all times on the prop. It's pretty snug and I'm, you're not going to see me actually get it off because I have to wiggle it back and forth till it comes off but make sure you don't drop your prop even a small dent or nick will wreck it. So now I've got it off, get the backing plate off and I'm just going to clean up the flange a little bit. I used a little bit of uh, penetrating oil when I was wiggling the prop back and forth At which point I can go grab the thing, put it back on. I'll check my mark to make sure I get the same orientation on the crankshaft flange. Make sure you mark with a good marker. If you do use some oil, make sure your oil doesn't take the mark off. And it's a pretty snug fit getting it back in the flange over those studs, so you, not the best camera angle, but you just kind of have to wiggle it back and forth until it seats pretty flat. I'm going to end up tightening these bolts into star pattern, uh, kind of slowly working up around. That way I can make sure the prop is mounted to the flange perfectly flat. And again, I'm not taking my hands off of it totally until I get at least one bolt started in there. You do not want to drop your prop. It's not too heavy, probably 15, 20 pounds but uh, you do not want to drop it. Check my mark again. Get the bracket for the skull cap spinner. Again, these are from Aircraft Spruce. Came in a kit, the um, spinner and the bracket came together. This is a 150G with an O200A Continental motor and a Macaulay prop, as you can see. You can already see how big those uh, oil cooling holes look now below the prop, how much they were covered before. I think this is going to help with cooling a lot.
Now again, I'm just going to snug these up in a star pattern. Kind of work my way up slowly, make sure it's not cockeyed on the flange. Then I'm going to grab my torque wrench and use this uh, table from Macaulay. My bolts are 3 8 inch, so I'm going to use 30 foot-pounds. And that's the diameter of the shank of the bolt. Uh, the head, these are 9 16 I'm using a nice six-point socket on them. It's only 30 foot-pounds, so it's not too terribly much. I'm going to torque them again. I'm working my way up in a star pattern. Now I'm going to put up a graphic of uh, a photo of the safety wire job before I took the prop bolts off. It's good to have a reference, especially if you're inexperienced like me with uh, safety wiring. I'm going to be using 0.32 stainless aviation safety wire. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Uh, and this pliers I use, this one's really nice. Um, I like that it's reversible. That's one thing you need to know is you start through one of the bolts, wrap one of your tabs around, twist it up to the other bolt, and then when you pass through that bolt, you need to reverse the direction of your twist. You're aiming for six to eight twists per inch on your safety wire. More is bad, less is bad. And they should pull each other. The two connected bolt heads should pull each other in the tightening direction clockwise. I'll put a picture up in the end so you can see what my job looks like in the end. I did try one of them once and then cut it off. Uh, if you have kind of a mistake, just uh, cut and throw the safety wire. You can't reuse it. And in the end, when I pull this through, reverse direction, twist about three eighths inch, half inch. I'm going to curl it over. Uh, it's good practice to do that so you don't cut up your hands on it in the future. It doesn't scratch anything else. I found the less kinked up you get the safety wire before you pull it through the bolt, the better time you're gonna have. There I reverse direction. I'm going to cut this off, hang on to the extra. Don't let it end up in the cowl or on the ground. And I'm going to twist that end over. I'm going to push on it just a little bit to make sure it's taut. While I finish up the other two pairs of uh, bolts here, I want to point out how much you can see where the paint isn't covering, uh, where that old cone spinner used to be. Uh, that's the whole point of this project, is to get those two holes opened up, uh, get more cooling air into the bottom of the engine compartment.
found about a foot long piece of safety wire is more than enough to connect these two bolt heads. Once I get this guy complete, I'll put up an image of my finished job. My picture's not the best. It kind of looks like they're not all pulling clockwise, but uh, I did look at them pretty closely in person, and they're all pulling to the, to the right. Just one Phillips head screw holds on the new spinner. That'll give a front on uh, image of how much more of those cooling openings and how much more of the cowl is open to the slipstream now that that larger cone spinner is gone. I'm gonna link a website as well where a uh, guy has a good breakdown of the different spinners you can get on these 150s and kind of a discussion of the problem of the cooling that I mentioned.